Hey guys, it's Libby. So a couple of years ago, there was a certain popular type of video uh, mainly circulating on YA booktube um, called Rip It or Ship It, where you uh, put a bunch of uh, characters, characters from popular books, you put their names into a bowl, and then you uh, pick out two at a time and s decide whether or not their relationship would succeed if they were to encounter each other uh, and, you know, potentially have a romantic relationship. And um, I think this is a super fun idea. So I'm resurrecting it and I am stealing it and I'm bringing it over to the classic seaside of booktube because all of the characters I have in here are from classic literature. Um, I've tried to pick ones that are fairly well known, but there's a couple weirder self-indulgent ones uh, just for me. Um, but I've got people from Victorian lit, I've got Shakespeare characters, I've got Greek gods, should be fun. Let's get started. Okay, so first ones we have are Mr. Bingley and Richard III. Oh my god, Charles Bingley is in so far over his head. I think either either Richard III would realize that Bingley is like totally not worth his time, he's not going to cause any problems, and he's not going to help him at all, uh, or he will decide that he is going to uh, siphon as much money out of Bingley as possible to fund his wars and then murder him. So I think Bingley just needs to steer clear. Either way, this relationship is not happening. I'm not totally sure why I put Richard III in here, because that's probably the case for everyone else, but there you have it. We're starting off with a rip. Okay. Oops. Okay. Eleanor Dashwood and Jane Eyre. This is an interesting combination. Okay, so I think they would definitely be friends. Um, uh, especially because like their friends in their respective books definitely have qualities of of the other um, so there's definitely some Jane Eyre in Marianne Dashwood and there's definitely some Eleanor Dashwood in Helen Burns um, I think Jane wants something more exciting from a romantic partner I don't think she'd be particularly interested in Eleanor and, you know, I think Eleanor isn't really going to pursue that if it seems like Jane isn't interested. So, um, they are friends, but I do not hear wedding bells. So hard to tell how many you've grabbed. Okay. Oh, I see who one of them is. It's Victor Frankenstein. Yep. And we're pairing him with Catherine Moreland. I mean, Catherine would be fascinated by him. The resurrect he is he is everything she ever wanted. The question is, is Victor gonna be able to handle that? I think he really wants to move on, move on with his life after this whole monster creation situation. So I think Catherine is gonna try to like talk to him about his tormented soul and he's gonna be like I really don't want to talk about my tormented soul and then he's gonna piss off back to Switzerland. She would definitely follow him to Switzerland. Um, I, I just I still don't think it's happening. Man I have not put anyone together so far. Okay fourth time's the charm? Maybe I'm just unromantic. Okay, we have Angel Claire from Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Please be someone I would ship him with. Lancelot from the Arthurian Legends. Okay, so Lancelot is kind of a lot of a lot of different people because um, the Arthurian Legends have a lot of different iterations. Um, I'm going back to the Lancelot of the Knight of the Cart. Um, I mean, I don't really know where the spark is coming from between these two, but I think if they did fall in love, like, I don't see anything that would drive them apart once they're in. Hmm, it's just a question of whether they're gonna get together in the first place. I think it's gonna come down to religion, so Angel is basically an atheist. I think Lancelot might be too Christian for Angel. I mean, Angel does fall in love with a Christian in his own story. 
Maybe? I don't know on this one. I'd be interested in other people's thoughts. Okay, we're getting closer to an actual ship. Okay, there's one, there's two. Okay, we have the narrator of the turn of the screw and Abigail Williams, who is uh, sort of the head, the head of the gang of girls from um, uh, the Crucible. These are probably the two least mentally stable people I have in the pile, and I think any relationship between the two of them would just be really destructive. Like, Abigail Williams does not need another friend who is seeing ghosts. I mean, I think they might possibly be into each other because Abigail Williams, like, exudes an uncomfortable amount of sexual energy for a teenager, and the narrator of The Turn of the Screw is a confused virgin. Um, so I think that might happen. I think I'm gonna ship it, but it will definitely lead to their destruction. Okay, I think, how many did I put in here? I think we're almost halfway through. Okay. We have Dido from the Aeneid and Nora Helmer. That is an interesting pair. Nora Helmer um, from Ibsen's A Doll's House. Okay, I think the Dido we're gonna have to talk about uh, is the Dido before she's met Aeneas. So um, she's fled her brother in, uh, where is she from? Like. Phrygia, somewhere in the east. She's become queen of Carthage. Nora Helmer has just walked away from her domestic bliss and she comes to Carthage and how are they gonna feel about each other? I think Nora would admire Dido for being like a strong independent woman um, and she'd probably be like teach me your ways so they would definitely we definitely have a meet cute but does the meet cute go anywhere? What's Nora offering to this relationship for Dido? You know, just like in the Aeneid, I think it's gonna come down to divine intervention because Dido, like, was really in love with her first husband, Sicaeus, and, like, she, her, she wasn't, she wasn't gonna fall in love with Aeneas, but then I'm pretty sure the gods intervened. I really hope that's what happened in the Aeneid, otherwise I'm looking like an idiot right now. And I don't think she's gonna fall in love with anyone just of her own accord because she still has eyes only for Sicaeus. So again, I think like good friendship, like good mentorship, but once Nora has become more self-sufficient, uh, she will go her own way and um, neither of them will be heartbroken over this. So again, ripping it. I have only like one half-hearted ship. Ugh. I thought this was going to be more lovey-dovey. Okay. Tamara, Queen of the Goths from Titus Andronicus. <laughs> Is there anyone I would possibly ship with her? Falstaff! Two Shakespearean characters. Two very different Shakespearean characters. I mean, Falstaff would definitely want to hit that because um, it is breathing. Um, I think Tamara would be down to, like, have a quick shag and then go their separate ways. Does that count as a ship? I don't think that counts as a ship. Okay. Oh, this is two, right? Yeah. Okay. Mary Cat Blackwood from, uh, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. And Mrs. De Winter. These are two other kind of mentally unstable people who I don't think would be very help, uh, healthy for each other. Um, yeah, I think Mrs. De Winter is going to take one look at Mary Cat Blackwood and run away. Oh, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to rip it. Are you supposed to actually rip the piece of paper once you've ripped it? I'm bad at this. Okay, next two. Okay, we have Morris from E.M. Forster's Morris means, uh, and we have Viola from Twelfth Night. Okay, so here's the thing. Morris doesn't like girls, and Viola is a girl sometimes. Uh, so would Morris 
be attracted to her in her guise as Cesario and then be disappointed to find out she is female. Now, if this were any other character from uh, the pot, I'd say they would like be able to sense that Viola Cesario is actually a woman, but Mars's whole thing is that he's a bit dim, so I think he would definitely think that she's actually a man. Um, but I think Viola would not like do anything to draw him on because I think like by the time she's become a man, um, she's already in love with Orsino and she's not going to abandon him for uh, this this English what what a stockbroker. So again, I don't see where the spark is coming from that's going to um, it's going to give that a chance. And then even if it had a chance, the genders are wrong. Okay, now we have. Achilles and Professor Henry Higgins. Whew. I just think Professor Henry Higgins would have absolutely no time for Achilles. I think you think he's like selfish and pompous and Professor Higgins is also selfish and pompous. They are just going to clash. It's not gonna happen. Oh my god, I think I've only got like three or four left. And the closest I've gotten to true love is the narrator of Turn of the Screw and Abigail Williams. Did I just pick, ooh, did I just pick unlovable characters? I feel like Mr. Bingley had possibility with someone. Okay, now I have Tartuffe, pretty unlovable. He's, um, he's from the Moliere play Tartuffe. Um, he's, uh, he's basically a con man. Who will be able to love him? Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. Well, I think he could definitely trick her into falling in love with him because she's, you know, I don't think Juliet is the sharpest knife in the drawer. Is there any way that like the love of Juliet would reform Tartuffe? I think, I think the play of Tartuffe is telling me that no, there isn't. He's really just a horrible person. I would not he has got enough problems to worry about ripping it okay oh 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 yeah I'm just gonna put all of them back I accidentally grabbed three okay okay Phaedra uh, from the um, is it it's a Euripides play um, Phaedra is the wife of uh, Theseus king of Athens uh, but she is cursed by the goddess Aphrodite to fall in love with her stepson, um, Hippolytus. And Phaedra is being paired with Hamlet. Oh my god, the Freud. Okay, so I'm just leaning into the interpretation that um, Hamlet does have some sort of sexual interest in his mother. And Phaedra, she's like an older lady. She's a stepmother. I think they could really easily transfer their affections to each other and have it like not be incestuous. Um, so once they've done that, are they gonna like destroy each other? I think, I think Hamlet needs to move in with Phaedra and get out of Denmark because um, the people there are just not good for him. So yeah, I think, I mean, Theseus is a pretty chill dude. I think he'd accept his wife having a younger lover because Theseus would totally do that himself. Yeah, Hamlet and Phaedra, my first wholehearted ship. Okay, I'm feeling better. Love does exist. Okay, here we have, I'm opening them together. Antigone and Eustacia Vi. Antigone would be so thoroughly unimpressed with Eustacia Vi and her ability to see what the right decision is and stick with it. There is no way this relationship is happening. Rip it. Okay, got, oh, oh no, oh dear. I have, oh no good, I have six left. Okay, I wanted to have an even number. I didn't want anyone to be left sad and alone. Okay, so we have Portia from um, The Merchant of Venice and Brutus from Julius Caesar. Oh, that's actually really funny because um, Brutus's wife in the play and also in real life is also named Portia. She's like another woman named Portia. Um, so, I mean, on the one hand, I'd say you gotta ship it because they are in fact married. But treating this as the Portia from 
uh, Merchant of Venice, I think they would realize their potential. Hi, Nova. I think they would realize... Nova ships it. I think they would realize their potential to be a power couple. Oh, I'm sorry. She doesn't ship it. She just really wants to go outside. You can go outside when I'm done, Noves. I think they would both recognize their potential to be a power couple with, like, Brutus's um, strong moral center and Portia's ability to persuade people. I think they would have a lot more success together than Brutus had with his actual Portia in Julius Caesar, because he is married to a straight-up crazy lady. Okay, got two more pairs. One is going to be Zeus, the god, and Edmund from King Lear. I mean, how is that happening? I, I, I rip it. No. Okay, now last two. I should remember who they are, but I don't. Did we already do Mr. Bingley? Yeah, who is very, he was the first one with Richard III. Okay, so we have Carmilla, the vampire, and... Socrates. Oh my god. Socrates is the man with the greatest ability to resist sexual temptation of anyone in the box. And sexual temptation is kind of Carmilla's thing. I don't know if you guys have read the symposium, but if you have, you know that Socrates not going to bite. So it looks like the only true love that I've managed to spin out of all these different characters is Hamlet and Phaedra. Am I a bad matchmaker? Or do you think that I just got unlucky with my picks? Or do you think that I just put too many unlovable people into this, uh, into this pot? Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. If you do a video like this with characters from classic literature, definitely tell me about it. I would be very interested to watch. But goodbye for now. I'll see you soon.